I'm Rebecca Valcarzo, and I'm happy to share with you Saturday at the Canal, a poem by Gary Soto. He's one of my favorite contemporary poets, born in California, and he's written memoirs and fiction and poetry. Let's read this one, Saturday at the Canal. I was hoping to be happy by 17. School was a sharp check mark in the roll book. An obnoxious tuba playing at noon because our team was going to win at night. The teachers were too close to dying to understand. The hallways stank of poor grades and unwashed hair. Thus, a friend and I sat watching the water on Saturday, neither of us talking much, just warming ourselves by hurling large rocks at the dusty ground and feeling awful because San Francisco was a postcard on a bedroom wall. We wanted to go there, hitchhike under the last migrating birds, and be with people who knew more than three chords on a guitar. We didn't drink or smoke, but our hair was shoulder length, wild when the wind picked up, and the shadows of this loneliness gripped loose dirt by bus or car, by the sway of train over a long bridge, we wanted to get out. The years froze as we sat on the bank. Our eyes followed the water, white-tipped but dark underneath, racing out of town. Okay, a lot is going on here. Definitely we're meeting these boys who are restless, unhappy with their life. They're feeling like their lives are at a standstill. They're excited to get on with it, to start adventures. And their idea of a great life would be to go to San Francisco and meet people who are making music and doing fun things. I get the sense that this might be hearkening back to the 60s when hitchhiking and long hair and guitars were the thing, the fun thing, the cool thing and the dream of young folks. Now let's take a look at some of the technical tricks that Soto has got up his sleeve here. He says um, school was a sharp check mark in the roll book. So here he's making a metaphor, but he's also just using the elements of school um, to paint a picture of what school was like. And the fact that it's just a check mark means that it's not meaningful. It's not changing his life. He doesn't feel like he's learning important things. Instead, it's just a check mark in the roll book. I was there, but I wasn't really there in a sense. It's just a perfunctory thing, and I can't wait to move on to the next stage of my life. An obnoxious tuba. So the band plays because there's a pep rally, something like that. The hallway stank of poor grades and unwashed hair. Well, of course, grades don't make a smell. <laughs> unwashed hair maybe makes a smell. But the idea that the hallways are just like full of this um, poor grades, so people are not doing well, they're not stimulated, it's not an exciting place. And the idea that it stank, it just implies, the, the word implies um, rottenness and uh, unkemptness, like not attention being paid, just things, you know, flowing along without anybody taking good care of them, maybe without taking good care of these kids, or the kids not taking advantage of what the adults are offering. That could be it too. So it stank of poor grades and unwashed hair. Very clever way to describe at least how he felt about school which is not good. Thus a friend and I sat. So the friend sits with him and they're not doing something really cool. They're throwing rocks <laughs> and they're warming up by throwing rocks. And this is the, the big thing, hurling large rocks at the dusty ground. This is all there is to do. This town must be boring, kind of a dead end place with not too much going on. And feeling awful because San Francisco was a postcard on a bedroom wall. So this is their dream, a postcard sent by somebody who's having real adventures in a real city where stuff is going on. 
And here are the boys waiting, waiting for life to begin. We wanted to go there. They'd be happy to hitchhike under the last migrating birds. So even the birds get to leave town, right? Seasonally, they can come, but they can go and they have more freedom than these boys who are stuck there. And be with people who knew more than three chords. <laughs> well, actually, I only know three chords <laughs> on my guitar. But they were hoping to find people who know stuff that they want to know. Unlike school, where they're learning things that they don't care about, people who really play the guitar well, that would be exciting. They would really learn from those people. So they're hoping to find people who know more about guitar than they do, more about life than they do. Then we didn't drink or smoke, so, you know, maybe adults, that's kind of expected, but they're kids, so no, in this time period, it wasn't um, so maybe quite so stigmatized to drink and smoke. It was a little more of a expected thing. Nowadays, we think in terms of health um, consequences, and um, it's much less popular, uh, which I think is a good thing, <laughs> but, um, but in the poem, it's kind of a adult thing that again they have no access to they're still waiting to be grown-ups so they didn't drink or smoke but they had the long hair wild the wind picked when the wind picked up and when shadows of loneliness gripped loose dirt oh so their hair is wild and one foot is already in the adventure they want to have but Shadows of loneliness grip the loose dirt. So their shadows are anchoring them to this town, this place where they haven't found adventure and where they feel stuck. By the sway, oh, by bus or car or sway of the train, just any kind of transportation, <laughs> they'd be happy to get them out. And then, then it says the years froze. The years froze as we sat on the bank. That was the time going by so slowly. It seemed like years had gone by, and it was only a week. And years had gone by, and they're still not graduated yet. Years are going by. Time is wasting. They want to seize the day. They want to make the most of life. But they can't, because they're just waiting for this stage of their life to end in the new excitement to begin. Our eyes follow the water, and the water, like the birds, gets to leave town. It's flowing, it's moving, not stuck like they are. Our eyes follow the water, white-tipped, but dark underneath. So the waves, you know, they're flowing, and, and it looks like there's white tips because of the, the speed at which the waves are going, frothing. But underneath the water, it's dark. So there's the dark undercurrent racing out of town. This reminds me of um, the, to me, dark is always something hidden or profound, something um, unknown. And really, their adult lives are unknown. What they're hoping for is very ambiguous. It's cloudy what they're going to do and be. They just know they want more. They want to be more and do more. But this dark water is like that unknown future that's waiting for them. They don't know what it's going to be like. And there's something scary about growing up too, to take responsibility for yourself. Um, your life is now yours to chart, to create. And it's going to be mysterious, right? So the, the water is rushing out of town and there's some unknown element there, the fact that it's dark, the unknown of the future, the unknown of the, their own depths and who they can be, what their potentials are. It's, it's all still a mystery. Well, Gary Soto, folks, look him up, read more of his poems. I think you'll enjoy them. And I hope you've enjoyed this one, Saturday at the Canal.